Hello and welcome to another Key Smash Studios video. Today we're going to go over a really quick and easy way to set up a landscape material in Unreal Engine, specifically one that is low poly. Sometimes when you first open up a game engine, creating your first landscape material can be a little bit daunting. So we're going to go through all the steps to make sure it's nice and simple, and then if you have any questions, you can let me know down below. As always, if you find these videos to be helpful, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing, all that jazz. It really does help us out. With that said, we're going to hop right into this. First thing we're going to do is we're going to come down here to our content browser. Uh, and by the way, this is set up in the default mode just so it's similar to what you have when you first open Unreal. But we're going to come down here to our content browser. We're going to right click and we're going to create a basic asset called a material. We're going to name this asset landscape material. So we have our landscape material down here, and we'll see that when we open it, we come to this basic material thing, just like any other material in Unreal. But we need to make this a material that we can use on a landscape, because we want to make a landscape, and specifically we want to make this one a low poly landscape. So the first thing we want to do when we're making a landscape material is we're going to come off here, and we're going to drag out off of the base color, and we're going to search for a layer blend, a landscape layer blend is going to allow us to blend between different textures or colors to make a landscape more realistic. If you come over here to the left part of the layer blend, you'll see that we have zero array elements. And we can add a few. I'm going to go ahead and add three of them. And you'll see that right underneath it, we now have three array sections for various layers. The first thing I want to do for each of these layers is give them a name. So let's say we want to have a grass layer. Um, in our landscape material, well, we can have a grass layer. We can also do one for snow, and maybe one for rock. So we have three of these, and I just want to check really quick. I just want to swap all the preview weights to one, and then the, the uh, blend type to LB height blend. It's not strictly necessary. You can do this without doing that, but for me, this is a bit of a streamlined process. If you ever come across a normal for a landscape material, you're going to want to have height blend in there. So we're going to pull this off. And if we have a texture, like if we've downloaded an asset pack and we have a landscape texture like the grass, you're going to come here and you're going to create a texture sample. So if you type up texture sample, you'll see that there's a texture sample here. And inside this texture sample, you can select any of the various textures. These are all the textures from the base package from the third person player. But you can select any of them and it'll apply that texture straight into that layer. Now this isn't quite what I want because I don't actually have a grass landscape right now. So if you don't have a texture, and that's totally fine, by the way, we can remove that by holding down Alt and clicking on the line. We can come right off of this, and we're going to search for a constant. And a constant 3 vector is going to allow us to give a RGB value. And that RGB value we can change within here on our color picker. So we can select a green, maybe like a little bit of a darker green, give ourselves a grass texture. And since we are doing a height blend, we're just going to drag this to the height of grass as well. If you have a normal map for your grass texture, go ahead and drag that right onto that height grass. And we're going to set up a similar thing for all the different layers that we're using on our landscape. So this one is going to be our snow layer. So I'm just going to go somewhere on the lighter blue side, close to white. We can swap to this if it's a little bit easier for me. And I'm going to say OK. And just click and drag that to height as well. And again, we're going to do this for a rock. So another constant. Again, if you have the textures, by all means, use texture samples. You use a texture sample for both the normal and the texture if you need to do that. But seeing as I don't have that right now, we're just going to go for a rock that's like a dark gray, something in that range. So right now we have a material that is going to allow us to paint on with either a green, a white, or a gray if we want like a grass, a snow, or a rock texture. 
and that's pretty good. Um, but like I said, we wanted to make this a low poly material. If you're only interested in landscape materials, by all means you can stop here. If you would like to make this a landscape material, we're going to mess specifically with this normal here. So it takes an input that normal usually gives us an up and down direction or something like that. It allows us to hide a bit more details on a lower polygon object. So we're going to build off of this, um, but we're not going to build right from there. What we're going to do is we come down here underneath. I'm going to right click on just anywhere in the thing, and we're going to grab a world position. This world position is going to give us an absolute world position tile. And from there, we're going to do a little bit of math. Now you don't have to truly understand this math to make it work, but I will try to go through it. We're going to take the derivative of our x value and our y value. It doesn't really matter which one's on which side. But right from this, we're going to take ddx and the ddy. So taking the derivative of the x and y value of our absolute world position. And then we're going to cross multiply them into one vector. So this is going to give us the value, average value of the derivative of our x and y value into one vector. Then we're going to normalize that vector so it matches something that you might see in a normal. And then we're going to correct that and connect that to normal. And you'll see, if you can see up here, since this is a little bit of a, of a white, um, it's sort of hard to see, but you can see that we start to have this sort of uh, polygon effect on our landscape, which is great because that's actually what we're going for. We're just going to touch up a few couple more things and we'll be done. We're going to pull off this roughness and we're going to just put a regular constant, not a constant three vector, just a regular constant. And we're going to change this roughness to one. We're going to pull off our specular, grab another constant, change this to 0.3. You don't really have to do this. It just makes it look just a tiny little bit better. And again, with our metallic, we're going to pull off a constant and we're going to leave that one at zero. And we'll see that we just can see the edges of that shape just a little more defined now with all those things. So let's go ahead and save. And we're going to go into our scene now. So let's minimize this. We're in our scene. This is the default starting area of the third person. I've just deleted the walls so we can see out into the area around us. If we go over to our landscape tab, we can create this landscape here. We don't have to worry about selecting the material here we can add it on layer. So we have this default landscape that's covering the whole world. And if we select our landscape over here in the world outliner, we can come down here and give it our landscape material. So we made a landscape underscore material, and it's gonna compile shaders for a little bit. Once your shaders compile, we can come over here to the paint section of our landscape. Again, you'll see the three layers that we created. We have our grass, snow, and rock layers, and you'll know right underneath them that we there's a little drop-down that there's nothing inside. If we want to add something to that, we can create layer info. So we're going to create a weighted blend layer normal, and we're just going to drop this in this third-person CPP thing. And you can put it wherever you want in your project, but we're just going to create one of those. And again, we'll have to compile shaders for each one of these that we do. Don't be afraid of your shaders taking a long time to compile. That's perfectly normal. It's perfectly fine to step away for five to 10 minutes here and just let them compile. After your shaders compile, we're gonna go ahead and do this with the other layers that we've created. So now we have layer info for our grass, snow, and rock. And what this is gonna allow us to do is to take this and compile some more assets. But after those assets compile, we can look at how they blend together.
Um, so right now, this doesn't look like much, but the magic of this cross product derivative is about to show up. We're going to take our sculpt tool and we're going to increase our brush size just to about the size of this area here. And then we're going to make it go up. And then lo and behold, when we hit play and we come into this to this world and we're running here, we can see that this cross product creates this low poly effect on the landscape. Our landscape has paintable layers, so you know if we can paint our cliffs to be gray and you know our grass to be green and the top of our mountains to be white, then then we'll be will be great. As far as this little like blue line in between layers, or if you ever see snow going directly on the grass, it'll be purple. Uh, that's strictly because I use constants and not actual textures. When you're making an actual landscape, you'll want to have a texture for all of this because you don't want the snow to be pure white. You want there to be some type of uh, clutter on it or something of the sort. So I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions at all about how this landscape material works, looks, or anything like that, please let me know down below. I'm always more than happy to help. If you haven't already, check out the link in the description below to join our Discord. I'll also throw a link to our Twitch. We stream three times a week. Additionally, we have an app on the App Store. If you would like to take a look at it, I've put a link in the description below. I hope this has been helpful. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. It really does help us out, and hopefully we'll see you next week.